Some 5,000 ships visit Australia each year in international trade. They carry 98% of Australia's imports and exports. It is important that these vessels operate safely and do not damage our marine environment. While responsibility for the safety and operation of each vessel lies with ship owners and flag states, Port State Control, or PSC, is designed to ensure safety and environmental standards are maintained. In Australia, the Australian Maritime Safety Authority, AMSA, conducts PSC inspections in accordance with international guidelines. AMSA conducts over 3,000 PSC inspections each year in 70 ports around Australia. Inspectors are guided by international convention requirements and resolutions of the International Maritime Organisation and the International Labour Organisation. The purpose of this video is to familiarise ship owners, operators and crew with Australia's port state control requirements. Every year, around 200 unsafe vessels are detained by AMSA until safety breaches are fixed, an expensive and time-consuming exercise for ship owners. AMSA's data show that certain items of equipment or general areas of safety on board are consistently responsible for a vessel's detention. These items will be highlighted with this symbol over the course of this video. This video will also show photographs of vessel defects. These images are from AMSA's archives and are not from vessels that assisted in the filming of this video. AMSA publishes detention information, including the deficiencies responsible for the detention, every month on its website. AMSA also publishes annual PSC reports, which provide detailed data and analysis. All parties involved in ship management, operation and ownership who have a responsibility for the safety of the crew, cargo and vessel, including seafarers themselves, are encouraged to review all such data regularly and use the information provided to improve the level of safety of the systems and vessels with which they're involved. On arrival, inspectors will examine the external condition of the hull for signs of structural integrity problems, proper working of load line arrangements and draft marks, submersion of load line, mooring arrangements and ladders for access to and from the ship. When the inspector steps aboard, they will meet with the vessel's master. In this meeting, AMSA provides the master with an opportunity to declare whether any known defects exist. The AMSA inspector will ask the master directly and request the master sign a declaration to that effect. Masters should note the significance of this question, as this is an opportunity for them to advise the AMSA inspector of any defects and what remedial actions are in place. In doing so, it is possible that the master may avoid a detention or deficiency being given, even if the defects have not yet been reported to the flag state or recognised organisation. Prior to this, all masters and operators should be aware of the legal reporting requirements of sections 185 and 186 of the Navigation Act 2012. In the meeting with the master, the inspector will also verify that the ship carries the necessary valid certificates and documentation. This forms part of the initial inspection. When undertaking the inspection, an inspector will use a ship inspection record or SIR book, whether in hard copy or on a laptop. The ship inspection record book contains guidelines and all relevant forms and is used by all AMSA inspectors, ensuring there is a consistent approach to inspections across Australia. These guidelines and lists are not exhaustive, but are intended to provide the basis for an initial inspection sufficient to identify potentially unseaworthy and substandard vessels. 
While the inspector is checking the vessel's documentation and certificates, the master would typically arrange for requested items of equipment to be ready for inspection and testing during the physical inspection of the vessel. Once the initial meeting with the master has concluded, the inspector will check areas critical to the safe operation of the ship in order to ascertain whether the vessel is in compliance with its certificates and to assess the overall conditions of the ship, its equipment and its crew. The AMSA inspectors use their professional judgment in conducting the inspection, determining the extent of inspection and the action required in response to identified deficiencies. In cases where clear grounds exist to do so, the inspector may conduct a more detailed inspection. Depending on the circumstances, this may be limited to a particular aspect of the ship or equipment, or, in some cases, may involve more extensive expansion of the inspection. For all inspections, a Form A is completed to indicate that an inspection has been carried out. When deficiencies are noted, a Form B is also completed. AMSA is concerned that human error caused by fatigue has contributed to safety incidents in Australian waters. Port State Control inspections incorporate checks for compliance with the hours of rest requirements of the International Convention on Standards of Training, Certification and Watchkeeping, 78-95, as well as the Maritime Labor Convention, 2006. Inspectors will check the records of hours of rest and work and may examine other evidence, such as logbooks, including cargo and other operational records, and speak with watchkeepers during the inspection. If hours of rest are not in accordance with the STCW convention, AMSA will require corrective action and may consider detaining the vessel. Inspectors will check whether the ship is using the current charts and other navigational publications appropriate for its voyages. Whether appropriate navigational and operational records are maintained and whether bridge equipment is operating satisfactorily. Wheelhouse visibility also needs to be checked. The onboard radio equipment is vital for a vessel's safety. It allows the vessel to communicate in an emergency and receive navigational and safety messages or other vessel's calls of distress. AMSA inspectors will routinely request a test of the GMDSS installation. This may be the MFHF, Inmarsat, DSC as appropriate and VHF systems. The arrangement for provision of a secondary source of power to the radio installation is also part of this test, as it has been the cause of increased detentions in recent years. The 406 MHz EPIRB is also vital for emergency distress signalling. Inspectors will check the condition of masts, antennas, ventilation closures, compasses and other equipment fitted or stowed outside the wheelhouse.
In checking the superstructure exterior, inspectors will examine the integrity, water tightness, and where appropriate, air tightness of the structure and fittings. Attention will be paid to the ability to close ventilation dampers and access firefighting equipment in the event of a fire. Pilot boarding ladders will be examined together with guardrails, ladders, and arrangements for safe access to deck spaces. Areas of likely stress concentrations will be checked for cracks or excessive corrosion, together with deck machinery, pipes and structure. The watertight integrity and structural strength of the ship is critical for the safety of the ship, its personnel and protection of the marine environment. AMSA inspectors will check the self-closing arrangements on air pipes for tanks and hatch sealing and securing arrangements. The emergency source of power to other critical systems will also be inspected. As part of the standard AMSA port state control inspection, the inspector will generally request a demonstration of the emergency generator. This will usually be simply a no-load manual start or, if fitted, auto start based on a simulated blackout condition. As a general rule, the test requested will not impact upon shipboard operations. When examining the lifeboat and life raft stowage areas, inspectors will check the condition of lifeboats, life rafts, davits, launching and embarkation arrangements, including lighting in the area. The vast majority of lifeboats in use are provided with a hook release system that operates both offload, the boat is floating and the weight off the hooks before they can be opened, and onload, the hooks can be opened with the full weight of the boat, its equipment and a full complement of personnel on the hooks. The AMSA inspector will check that the connections between each of the devices in the release system are maintained in their original condition. It is essential that both hooks release simultaneously when the onload release system is deliberately operated. The AMSA inspector will enter the lifeboat to carry out the necessary checks and will require an additional securing of the lifeboat prior to their entry into it. AMSA inspectors will check the hydrostatic interlock system to ensure the interlock is in a position whereby it prevents the main lever from being operated. The dangers of incorrectly maintained or incorrectly reset lifeboat hook release systems are not only very real, they can be lethal. Inspectors will also check releases fitted to life rafts for proper rigging and condition.
Where required and or fitted, the inspector may request a demonstration of the lifeboat's engines and steering to ensure that they are operating correctly. AMSA inspectors will check the ship's firefighting equipment, procedures and appliances. Fire dampers need to be maintained and tested to ensure they close as required. During a PSC inspection, AMSA inspectors may request that any damper closure is demonstrated. The AMSA inspector will observe the effort required by the crew in operating the damper whether the damper moves freely, is balanced, and if fan sounds are as expected. Usually, correct operation of the dampers can be confirmed without any need to open the casing for inspection. It is essential that the emergency fire pump is able to pressurise the fire main under all normally expected conditions of list and trim, at all drafts and while working cargo. Fire main isolating valves will be checked during the inspection, often done during or shortly after testing the emergency fire pump. The level of inspection is simply a visual examination as the AMSA inspector walks around the deck of the ship. Often it is apparent that part of the pump arrangement essential for its correct operation is missing or otherwise defective. Defects noted with a fire pump, fire hoses, isolating valves or the fire main in general are all grounds for detention. Hydraulic oil leakage commonly prevents safe operations in the steering gear area. Inspectors will check arrangements for changeover of steering pumps and for emergency operation of the steering gear, including compass and bridge communications. Inspectors pay particular attention to the engine room in view of the fire and physical dangers presented by the combination of fuel and lubricating oil, high temperatures, heavy machinery, high pressure fluids, electricity and confined spaces. Typically, inspectors may find problems such as the possibility of high pressure oil spraying on hot surfaces, arrangements for stopping oil flow and engine room hazards such as oily rags, electrical safety and life-saving arrangements will be checked. The AMSA inspector will check the vessel's oily water separator is operating properly by asking the ship to test the separator's monitoring device and by requesting that an alarm condition be simulated. If the monitor continuously indicates an oil level above the alarm point, 
the AMSA inspector will expand the inspection to determine the cause of the problem. This may include requesting that the filtering coalescing units are open for inspection to assist in determining if the unit has been adequately maintained as a whole. The accuracy of entries in the oil record book will also be checked. Inspectors will check the accommodation, sanitary, catering, hospital and recreation spaces to verify that they meet international standards for the health of the crew. As a signatory to the Maritime Labour Convention, AMSA will inspect the vessel to ensure compliance of vessels operating in Australian waters. In the galley, inspectors will look for cleanliness of food preparation areas and equipment, garbage disposal arrangements and the absence of vermin. Accommodation should include sufficient clean sanitary spaces, laundry facilities and recreation spaces. If the AMSA inspector finds numerous deficiencies in one area of the inspection, it may indicate that the ship's safety management system, or SMS, has failed. Detention of a ship is part of a process that ensures critical deficiencies are rectified before the ship can depart. When a ship is detained and released, AMSA notifies the flag state and the relevant classification society. Details of all detentions are also forwarded to the International Maritime Organisation and to AMSA's MOU partners. Every effort is made to avoid undue detention of or delay to a ship. It is now recognised that port state control is more effective when nations in a region cooperate rather than acting alone. As such, Australia is a signatory and active member of both the Indian Ocean Memorandum of Understanding on Port State Control IOMOU, and Asia-Pacific Memorandum of Understanding on Port State Control, Tokyo MOU. Regional cooperation allows member states to share information on inspection results and ensure follow-up of deficiencies found during inspections that may not be able to be rectified in the initial inspection port. The intention of this video has been to familiarise ship owners, operators and crew with Australia's port state control requirements. Together, we can ensure the safety of vessels and seafarers operating in Australian waters and help to protect our precious marine environment. For more information on any aspect of port state control, please visit amsa.gov.au.